So we have a plate here from a lost city, a lost city built in London. It was huge, it was magnificent, and it no longer exists. Welcome to Collection of Stories and Discoveries. These videos are going to be about fascination with objects. That word covers it all, fascination. So we've got collections here, stories to tell, and discoveries that we've made. And all of it combined together leads to that one word, which is fascination. It fascinates the mind. So let's start off with one of my favorite ones that I've, I've yet to tell. And I've been very eager to tell this story for many years on lots of videos. It's about a lost city in London. A great, magnificent, tremendous city within the last hundred years built within London and it's totally vanished now. But this little object that we have, that we start off with, is an exhibition piece from this city. And it's from the 1908 Franco exhibition. It was a collaborative exhibition with France. And there's so much about this. The Franco-British exhibition was a large public fair held in London between the 14th of May and the 31st of October 1908. The exhibition attracted 8 million visitors and celebrated the Entente Cordiale signed in 1904 by the United Kingdom and France. The fair was the largest exhibition of its kind in Britain. It covered an area of 140 acres. The exhibition was a grand city they built, magnificent. And the architecture had influences all across the world. It had a very Anglo-Indian look. Palaces, magical, it was impressive. And it was, it was completely white. It was made of a material called stucco. That material is just sort of a lime, cement, water-based, hard setting, solid material which they rendered and sculpted this grand city. The site was used for four more exhibitions. The Imperial International Exhibition in 1909, the Japan Exhibition in 1910, the Latin Exhibition 1912, and finally the Anglo-American Exposition 1914, after which the site stood unused in disrepair for over 20 years. Over the course of the last century, it was slowly demolished to make way for various developments with the BBC taking over much of the area in the 1950s, creating the famous BBC Television Centre. So the whole area of the BBC Studios, which is now called White City, that name comes from the great white city that was built there. And I can't talk it up too much, it was a great city. It was huge. The buildings were so impressive, it looked like temples. There was different areas from all around the world. Sadly, I would say more than 99% of the city is now gone. You'd, there's, there's nothing left about, other than the remnants that the area is called White City. But within South Africa Road is some territorial army buildings and I've heard that within the internal building there is some halls that the, the original structure of White City. And I've yet to find that on Google images of these, but maybe I can make a visit and try and go see if it still remains. But the last of the main buildings was knocked down for the Westfield Centre. But the building that got knocked down, if you look how wonderful it is here, it's magnificent. But when it got knocked down, it no longer even looked like that. But the arch was there. I think it was the internal structure. It was, it was, look how great it looked. And then it went from this to this, to now gone. And the Westfield Centre. Here we see a true exhibition piece and there was many exhibition pieces, souvenirs and collectibles. And it shows the French flag and the British flag and the collaboration and the alliance. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. There is so much stories involved with this exhibition and this white city. There was a few disasters and a few deaths. Sadly, there was a balloon accident. On the 14th of August, 1908, a balloon owned by the American balloonist, Captain Lovelace, 
exploded at the exhibition, killing his 18-year-old secretary and a male employee. Six others were injured, including a 47-year-old employee who died days after the accident. There was the Olympic Park was built there. It was the first ever time for the Olympics to be held in England. And it was in fact held there in another sort of area of the White City development that was built, this Olympic Park in 1908. And it was only because the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in Italy that the Olympics was taken from Italy and moved because of the disaster to England. Before we move on to look through this wonderful city and we'll look back through history, I'll show you another little souvenir we've got. They have souvenirs for the different areas. They had an Irish area and some souvenirs were a Celtic cross. This is a pig. It's got the French flag and the British flag. So we have the pig, we have the plate. And to show how magnificent this exhibition was, is have a large postcard collection and it shows you all the exhibitions going on, events taking place. They've all got handwritten writing and stories of the people that visited the exhibition. Talking about what they saw, what happened, what rides they went on. Someone from Surrey. I mean, I don't make these things up. It just landed in my hand. Great Yarmouth. We got one from Great Yarmouth. I bought these cards from all over the world. From Great Yarmouth, just right there. 24 York Road. We'll have a little flick through these cards. Well, it may have been the first, who knows, it likely was, the Swan Boat Lake. And that's a magnificent lake that was built. So someone from Devon has wrote their postcard there, and it depicts the colonnade of Palace of Music. And you can see that lovely, large embellishment, as it were, cartouche, architectural, classical, scallop shell design, amazing thing. So beautiful, okay? So there we go. I've just show you they even built this Irish village. You've got this old Irish castle. This was a Disney World. It had it had many worlds within this city and it had Canada because you had the French Canada colonization and had the lovely but here it is now the Canadian pavilion. One of my favourite images the cascading waterfall. The cascading waterfall is quite something. There was even gondolas. Venetian waterways. You can experience the world at this exhibition. Before I jump to the, my, one of my favourite parts of the city, look at it at night time. Isn't that wonderful? Just think that city was just built with technology inferior to what we have now and that, that could have lasted a lifetime but it stood there tens of years and it was only there as a fairground sort of one-off exhibition and it lasted a long time. I reckon with uh, maintenance it could have gone on forever. So there's no reason we couldn't build something like this nowadays. But I want to jump to my favourite part, the flip flap. There was a magnificent ride called the flip flap. So when you look up the flip flap, there's a famous singer in the early 1900s in England and she sung a song about the flip flap. And I found it years ago, and I've always wanted to share it. Oh, her name was Flory Fordy, that was it. Recorded the 22nd of September, 1908. Here we go. Shepherd Bush. Oh, George, I've had enough. 
So, what I love about these stories is you you learn about people and that wonderful song. You gotta have love. That is a funny song. That the flip flop. Get me off it. I don't ride it anymore. Come on, George. Get me off. Turns out, Flory Fordy was one of the big megastars of the early 20th century. Australian born, lived and worked and had her fame in England. I'll tell you something, I'd like to have a drink with old Flory. She seems to write a laugh. So there you go. A lost city, once in London. One of the most spectacular things that um, we may have ever built. It came and it went. It had been inspired by things from all around the world. And before its demise, it was the inspiration for many other things ongoing. So nothing truly ever goes. Every thought process, every creation is influenced by something before that. And everything that's done then influences other things ongoing. So um, that's how I like to think. This is the first of our collections, stories and discoveries. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again for another episode. Please do follow us on our YouTube channel and subscribe.